Let me show you because this is quite funny. I'm currently on summer break. <laughs> My name is Maritza Lara and if you are new to my channel, welcome and thank you so much for visiting me here in Home Sweet Classroom. If you are new, don't forget to go ahead and hit that subscribe button before we get this video started and click the notification bell for future videos and don't forget to like, share, and comment. I love hearing from you guys and interacting with people all around the world. It is so amazing. This YouTube family community has really, really opened up so many things for me, um, so many ideas, collaborating, I'm so much fun on here. So don't forget to like, share, and comment. I love hearing from you guys. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing you guys, with you guys about my teacher's pet. Interestingly, that word is used so loosely and it just is such a fun um, way to say, I'm gonna be telling you guys about my pet. Um, Maylene from Mrs. Calls Campers, big shout out to Maylene. She put this together, this video for us. So a bunch of us teachers are coming together to talk about our teacher's pet, which is our pets at home. Um, we're going to be answering a couple questions for you guys and sharing with you guys all about our pet. So as you can see, mine is behind me, kind of exploring back there. <laughs> um, but I'm going to be reading some questions off my phone here and sharing with you guys uh, all about my pet. So let's go ahead and get this video started. Before I get started answering these questions, I want you to go and visit some of the other teachers that are also collaborating in this video and don't forget to give them some love as well and learn about their pets at home too. Um, us teachers have wonderful experiences and we love to share them with you guys um, and how we just kind of keep a balance here <laughs> with teaching and having a pet as well. So let me go ahead and get started with question number one. Okay, so question number one is, how many pets do you have? I only have a one pet. I don't think I could handle more than one right now. Um, my pet is super, super energetic, and I'll be showing you, telling you guys and showing you guys a little bit about that in a little bit, but I only have one pet. We do want another one. We want a small dog to kind of compensate for for me, I guess. I want a small dog. I want to be able to cuddle with uh, a pet on the couch. Um, so we do want a future, another dog in the future. Okay, so going for the second question. The second question is the name, breed, and age. Um, my dog's name is Rocket, of course, Lada. <laughs> um, his name is Rocket Lada, and it's so funny because like when the vet calls and they're like, oh, we're here, we want to speak to um, the parents of Rocket Lada, and we're like, oh yes, that's our dog. <laughs> uh, but I just think it's so cute how they name the dog's first name and then the last name. It's just so adorable to me. Um, so my, my dog's name is Rocket Lada, and he is about almost two years old. He'll be two in October, so a little over a year. Um, interestingly, my dog's birthday is also the same as my husband's. So I want to share with you guys and back up just a little bit. My love for my dog and my experiences is also shared with my husband. It is his dream dog. So um, a lot of this as well is a collaboration of some things that he would like to say um, and um, some experiences of his. So let me also tell you, my dog is an Australian cattle dog, also known as a blue healer, super energetic. Um, that's all I have to say. And he was, um, I got him off, a bre off of a breeder uh, in Texas. I was visiting in the States um, during Christmas time and this specifically in kind of the area my parents are at. So I thought it was a perfect opportunity to uh, pick him up and I did and it worked out really, really great. Um, she was super sweet and local, uh, well known. So it was just, it was all a really great experience. 
So the reason why I chose my specific pet, my specific Rocket Lara, is because it was my husband's dream dog. So I actually got him as a Christmas present for my husband and because there are no breeders here on island uh, and it's actually not allowed, um, I got him as a surprise and I put his picture in a box and I wrapped it up in a present and it was like, it was super light of course because it's a piece of paper and my husband was super curious he's like what is this it's it feels like nothing in there uh, so when he opened it up it was a surprise and he was super excited like he he literally jumped and screamed um and he was surprised that i was gonna bring back a dog uh, because i was traveling by myself uh, i was pregnant as well and it was it was quite an interesting experience um i have to say it was it was a little difficult because i had never dealt with a puppy um he was constantly crying at night and i was calling him like i don't know what to do um and but it all worked out it was all fine so i got him specifically for my husband as a christmas present and i also fall in love with him i love his energy i love um sometimes i don't love his energy i have to say sometimes i don't and i just love how um uh, we all interact and there's so many things we can do outdoors with him um the very next question is, what time of year did you get your pet? So I think I've already mentioned this, but I was teaching at the time. It was during Christmas break and I was pregnant and it was a couple, it was about a week before Christmas and I brought him back with me um, and surprised him. So I do remember coming home and that very first day, we had to go get some groceries and we had the big Christmas tree up. It was it was a, a real tree, a real Christmas tree. And he, we got back and the Christmas tree was like on the floor, just knocked, knocked down. And we completely freaked out because we were like, where is Rocket? Um, and when we found him, he was just like messing in some things, but he was still tiny, he was still small. So. Um, it wasn't such a big deal, but he was already getting into things. It was so funny. I do remember that coming back and we're like, already? Um, but it was during Christmas time. I was teaching at the time, so, um, but thankfully I was on Christmas break. So I had like a week, couple weeks to adjust and um, make accommodations for that. The third question is, did I run into any challenges? I did run into a couple obstacles. Um, I it wasn't easy to go and pick him up. I had to make up a lot of arrangements because of the area I live in. I live on an island and it was just really challenging to choose him, not knowing the breeder, not knowing the area, not having um, like a physical moment where I went to see him. So that was a little bit challenging for me. Um, the the breeder did send me pictures and sent me a lot of information about them and the dogs. Um, so it was nice to have that, but it was a little bit challenging because I wasn't familiar and it was just, I couldn't physically be there. But um, it was okay, it all worked out and I, did run into some other challenges when I was, of course, when to go pick them, pick him up by myself. Um, well, actually, my brother accompanied me, accompanied me, but it was just a really challenging because I had to take care of him by myself, and I had never taken care of a pup by myself, and um, I wasn't. I had to watch videos and just kind of familiarize myself on what to do. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I was doing the right thing um, as far as like walking him and training him because I was with by myself with him for about two weeks before I returned back and my husband helped me when we got back. Um, when we did get him, when we did, when I did come back and winter break was over, it was a little bit of a challenge because I had to uh, make sure everything was set at home in order for him to be by himself and the only benefit about being on the island and um just like everything's really really close within a five minute five minute drive my husband did fortunately was able to come during breaks but i could see this being a little bit of a challenge um and he's like trying to get on the couch back there but he's like halfway on the couch um let me show you because this is quite funny.
Okay. Um, so the challenge, my challenge, my biggest challenge was like returning back to work and just kind of settling everything at home for him to be by himself. So that was a little bit challenging for me and it just like kind of worried me and, um, because he was still so little. Um, but that, it all worked out. It was all okay. It all worked out and he did really great at home, um, before he got into everything and we had to then make accommodations for that. Okay, so the next question is, did you get your pet professionally trained? If yes, do you recommend? Um, no, we did not get our pet professionally trained. There are actually trainers here on island, but they're, they're active duty military that train the dogs that are on island uh, for the police force, um, the, the military police force and but I have to say that my husband did so much research. He put so much effort into this, um, into this pet, into our dog, that he would train it himself. He did so many things with him. I have to say my dog is really, really obedient. And um, he does a lot of tricks and a lot of things that, um, that are fun and just so, so cool. Um, he did do a lot of research and a lot of reading. And I guess over the years, he did so much um, that he he actually knew what to do. So it was quite impressive. Um, I got to learn a little bit on how to train him and how to uh, discipline him as well. And I have to say, our dog is really obedient. Um, uh, if anything, I would recommend my husband, <laughs> but he's not a dog trainer, but we didn't get him professionally trained. And um, I think it all really starts from when they're puppies and what environment they're in and what, uh, how you're disciplining them as well. So that has a lot to do with it and just giving them the attention they need as well. Okay, the next question is, what is your current routine for your, with your pet? So our current routine kind of consists of um, a cup. So our current routine is the following. So in the morning we wake up and right away he knows that we're all awake. Um, he's actually not allowed to go upstairs. He stays downstairs just because we have the baby upstairs and um, we've had a couple experiences that weren't so well. So he stays downstairs. So when we come, when we get out from bed and we're all ready, we come downstairs. Right away, we take him outside, um, bring him inside, he plays for a little bit outside, or my husband or I will take him for a walk in the morning um, when we get downstairs, and then um, we'll come back inside, give him water, give him food, and then he is out in the area with us. Um, either we play with him, um, one of his toys, he plays with his toys, and then, um, then by that time, it's like, going to work or doing an outing. So then we all just get kind of busy. By lunchtime, my husband comes during his lunch break and he also gives him water, takes him out, plays with him a little bit. And then, um, you wanna go outside? Goes outside with him, plays with him a little bit. And then um, it's by that time, it's time for him to go. So it's resting time. And then we get back, all back, get all back from work or from whatever outing we are in and then we take him um my husband either takes him to the dog park or he takes him out to play with the with the big red ball um out in the field that's like across from our house there's like this big field um of open area so he'll take him out there play some frisbee or play with the big red ball if they don't go to the dog park um, and the dog park is like walking distance really, really close. So that's really, really nice. And when it's really nice weather, we do like to take advantage of that and take him out. Um, and then by the afternoon, they eat, that's already the afternoon, evening-ish. And we come back home, he's resting. Towards the evening, um, he'll get a spurts of energy out of nowhere. So in the evening, sometimes when the baby's already put to bed, uh, sometimes my husband and I will go for a short walk and we'll take him out let him burn off some energy and then it is bedtime okay some pet must-haves i think some of my pet must-haves are um essentials um we don't have a large variety of pet supplies here 
it is very, very small of pet supplies. So when we go to the States, we try to get a couple things that we do need. Um, what with the limited luggage weight, um, there's not like a lot we can bring back. Um, but some things that I would say that I are must-haves are balls. Um, preferably those that do not squeak. <laughs> um, so balls and specifically for my pet because he's a herding dog um i like to we like to have the big big balls that um they're not bouncing balls they're they're herding balls and um, they come in variety of sizes depending on your dog's size um so i we like to have those kind of balls we have two we have one big red ball and one um kind of medium-sized blue ball so we have those two balls Another must-have is the water bottle, the pet water bottle. This water bottle is so great because it doesn't spill and on the other side you can put snacks or food and it's perfect to travel, to hike, um, eat spill-proof um, and we like to take it out to the dog park when we go on hikes with him or when we're just outside. It's really great to have. Um, my other pet must-have is the dog placemat when you put the bowls down on the floor sometimes the dogs kind of like push it and with this placemat it holds the bowls into place so there's no like water spilling or food getting falling on the floor um and that placemat just kind of holds it together and the other um pet must have is a frisbee I love, love, love the Frisbee because if you have an active dog, it's so nice to be able to throw it and then um, it's when it's a nice day, it's just, it's really nice to have that Frisbee because if you have a playful dog, you will know that it will come in handy. Um, and another pet must have is treats, of course. I like to keep my treats in a, in a jar. Um, and there was actually somebody here on the island who made dog treats, like homemade dog treats, which was really, really nice. Um, she had like pumpkin and, um, I think it was peanut butter. Um, and she would make them from home, which were super, super yummy, but she's not here anymore. So that's kind of like on my future to-do list that I'd like to make some homemade pet treats, um, and I think that would be a lot of fun. But anyways, I do keep my dog treats in like a small, ma or a medium-sized mason jar where um, it seals up and I, they can stay fresh. Um, so those are some of the pet must-haves. I love having those around. Oh, I forgot to mention the uh, dog feet cleaner, I think it's called. Actually, I don't even know what it's called, um, but it cleans his paws. You just stick his paw inside and it like washes his paws out. That has been so great because a lot of, he's very much of a herding dog. So he'll just like go outside and just like rubbish through everything. And then he comes inside and makes my floors dirty. So that has been a lifesaver. That is definitely a must have if you have a dog. You just like put their paw inside and or the water and you put the paw, paw, his paw inside and it just like cleans him. And it's like super easy to use and not so messy. You don't have to get the hose out. Um, so that's really, really great to have. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the next question. What are your pets? favorite currently my dog's favorites are the frisbee definitely the herding ball and the the small throwing balls he loves these three toys so so much um on top of socks of course so those are my dog's ultimate favorite toys he loves to play with those um he automatically knows when we're gonna get out the harness he automatically knows he's gonna go outside so definitely something that he really really loves because he's a herding dog a lot of the times he's he wants to be trained he wants to be giving something to do um so when we go outside it's definitely something that we just like we're right away throwing the ball um and it's kind of like a training thing but it's in a playful way so it's a, it's a lot of fun i really enjoy playing frisbee with him that's like my favorite thing to do with him Okay, so the next question is show a baby picture. So I ultimately love this baby picture. It, it's actually um, the picture that I got when, when I like first saw him. And this is the picture that I put inside the box. Oops. 
This is the picture that I put inside the box when I wrapped it up and gave it to my husband as a present. Um, he was super excited and I just thought he was so cute. He was the chunkiest little pup out of the group and it was just so adorable um he looked more uh, had more of a white more white spots when he was little and he was just so cute i fell in love with the cuteness um that i saw out of all the group of them um they were going so so quick so when i saw him i was like yes i want that one i want that one um and i was just so happy that i picked him out Okay, so the next question is share a funny memory or something quirky about your pet. Okay, the next question is, is asking me to show off my pet for 30 seconds on the clock. Are you ready? Go! wanting their first pet all right so I have gotten actually a couple questions about this and um, from different colleagues and friends um, and I would say that my very first tip or advice would be to do your research um, I did not do my research I let my husband do the research and when he told me that that was his absolute dream dog or childhood dream dog i was just like going with it i was like okay i was just like super excited okay oh this dog looks so cute but um i didn't consider or take into into the factor that my dog does not do well in this climate so getting him might have been too soon maybe i should have waited till we moved um, so it really just depends on what kind of dog you're getting and taking to consider into consideration the environment that you're living in, whether your dog will adjust to that environment with the seasons, with your home, uh, with your schedule. Will you have time for your dog? Will you have um, the money to support your dog? Uh, we'll take into consideration all those things because your dog is like another person in your home. They need the love, they need the attention, they need um, the resources as such as toys, a good food, um, a good sleeping bed, and all of those things cost money. So being financially ready does take into factor uh, whether you want to have a pet. Um, and um, that's kind of like my biggest advice if you're wanting a dog specifically and other other pets as well like any other kind of pet a cat a um a hermit crab things like that like you want to take into consideration your situation your living environment your schedule all of those things really matter um especially doing your research you want to be able to have this pet for a long time and have meaningful experiences so um taking into consideration those things is my biggest advice my tips for you are um, to make sure that you're, you have enough time for your pet because a lot of the times they get neglected and it's so, so sad seeing um, pets get neglected um, and then you have to give them up, so you definitely don't want that. My next tip for you is to name your pet um, beforehand. Um, or maybe even a little bit after you get to know your pet. Uh, we actually named our dog Shadow before I brought him home um, because he was always following us. And then when I got home, my husband got to know him a little bit better and he's like, I don't really feel like he's a shadow. I don't really feel like that's his name. So I had to do some research and I was like, can we change his name now after I've been calling him Shadow for the past two weeks? 
and we had so we had to do a little bit of research whether we could change his name and it was just like a really weird situation um so i definitely recommend and um my tip my second tip for you is to name your dog um maybe after or your name your pet maybe after a little bit after you've gotten to know your pet and had like the homey feeling of your pet um and then and then name your pet my third tip for you is to consider training your dog or training your pet it's definitely important to I'll be able to have a discipline in routine. You don't want your pet to be out of control because that takes into factor so many other things. Um, you won't be happy with your pet if there is not some kind of discipline and routine going on at home. Um, it kind of goes along with what I was saying earlier. You do want to have a safe environment for your pet and disciplining and having um, a routine down really really helps with how your pet reacts to you and re reacts to everybody else coming in and out of your house um, so i definitely recommend having a routine down and um, some kind of discipline for your, your pet okay so this is all the questions i have on my list for this teacher tag video on teacher's pet i hope you guys enjoyed this video and getting to know my dog rocket a little bit more and how i how i had him how um all these fun questions i really really enjoyed this video sharing with you guys all about my dog rocket and i hope you guys enjoyed it too so um don't forget to go and see the other videos as well go and show my friends some love and support they will they are so excited to be a part of this collaboration video again thank you maylene so so much for putting this video collaboration together it was so exciting and i can't wait um, to share more with you guys and do more collaboration videos. That is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and don't forget to go and hit that subscription button down below. Click the notification bell to be notified for future videos and give this video a thumbs up for me if you enjoyed it. It really helps me out in knowing if you are enjoying this content and please don't forget to comment down below. I love hearing from you guys and um, talking with you guys as well. So. If you have any tips that you want to share with me or um, on my dog specifically, uh, my Australian cattle dog, I know he's like in a special, he's a special breed because he's super energetic and um, just like, just so full of energy and there are so many good um, people out there that know how to take care of this breed and really know how to, how to, how to, how to show this pet some love so if you have any tips out there um, that you want to share with me rocket rocket stay stay <laughs> um please share down in the comments below i would love to hear from you guys and um get to know if you have an australian cattle dog and there are some things that you found that they love please share down in the comments below i would love to hear from you guys as well um, and that is it for today guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and, um, and if you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up for me and I will see you guys in the next video.